Today on the skid, I mean, this week on Built Not Bought, <laughs> we're cranking up the 80. That is right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Now, last episode, if you didn't see that, we've got Alan Woolley here from the Skid Factory, Turbo Geniuses. And in this episode, we're finally gonna fire up the 80 series. So I've put some oil in, Al's checked all the ECU, obviously with our aftermarket Haltech, we had to set all the sensors, triggers, parameters, injectors, all that kind of stuff. So we think we're pretty close. Dodged it up some wiring to get the thing to crank. I've thrown some oil in, so we'll see what happens. I've got to hold that throttle body open. I was just going to sit on that computer and check for things that I don't know about. <laughs> All that wizardry stuff. Um, but yeah, big moment. Let's see what happens. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. That was crazy. We're just going to crank it with no fuel and get some oil pressure first. Fresh engine, so plenty of oil circulation is good. I don't know about the battery, it's in the passenger seat and it's only got 11 and a half volts, so it might not go far yet. We'll see what happens. Sam reckons he's got plenty of batteries lying around, so <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, I need to find them. Hey, going flat. Come on. Oh. Yeah, boy, oil pressure. Good. Loves it. You got some in there? Alrighty, so we've got oil pressure. I'm just going to plug in the coils now and try for a crank. Oh. Bit of brake cleaner to help things along. <laughs> Go away more than that. Yeah, just pump it in. Yeah. Nope. No spark. I don't know. You'll have to pull one out to check that. Just pull one out and stick your hand on it. There. Put your finger on the bit. What are you oh. Nothing. Nothing? No. Nah. Where's my test light? All right, so I can't remember if I've done a little update or not, but we went to fire it and it didn't, obviously. Um, now, the two big things that set your timing, obviously, is your crank and cam sensors. So the polarity of them can be the wrong way around. I wasn't sure on the cam sensor because it didn't have a numbered pin. Um, we've just got a timing light on there and it was about 30 degrees retarded i think it was yeah, back retarded. there somewhere so the timing's way out i heard it trying to fire with a valve open and it bang through the exhaust so it's definitely not right gonna play with changing this pin around and see if that fixes the issue but pretty sound with petrol motors setting the timing and getting all your spark right so i guess you're, the core thing you're freaking out aren't you i'm like oh, i'm gonna have to pull the motor apart and start again <laughs> <laughs> my timing's wrong i already spent like 20 grand on building this engine no worries guys <laughs> and it makes the biggest thing <laughs> to be honest the patrol did the exact same thing as you flash back to that it was the same issue we had a I think it was a crank sensor. One of the pins wasn't quite touching on the plug and then it started straight away. So hopefully the same thing with this. So we just checked the wiring from the ECU to the coils, the triggers. We know we got power because we checked that before. So the thing I noticed was that the ground wire here is black with a white stripe, which suggests it's a uh, sensor ground wire, which you've confirmed. Um, so that's there only to be used for for the sensors like throttle position, um, all the sensors, and they're specifically for that. So if you put a like a heavy load, like a coil ground onto that circuit, it not only does it not work properly, but it also messes with the rest of the the, um, the sensors and that because you've got this coil collapse in the middle of it all. So in other words, it's my fault. I didn't ground it properly. So we'll run that wire to an actual ground and set it through the ECU. And hopefully it fixes it, because after that, I'm not sure what's wrong. <laughs> It'll be engine rebuild time. <laughs> Pull the crank out. Pull the crank out, start again. Oh, God. Wiring life, eh? You get a loop. Gotta love it. Move your hand, move your hand. That's some of my finest work, Alan. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well and truly at, That's your, earth? at your level, bro. That's better than a tech screw. <laughs> 
Looks like many a as stereo the, install. As wow. the oh. would say, it's industry standard. <laughs> that is a good spot. That's there for that reason, I swear to God. Sam's not going to change that either. No, that's, I'm keeping that forever. It's the best bit in this car. <laughs> oh, it did something. We made the right noises. Good. Righto. So now what? Hold the throttle open a bit. Turn Will it fire on its own steam? I'm going to turn the injectors on. That sounds like it's running on four cylinders, but that's all right. Nah, it's good. <laughs> I've never heard of one MC before, Alan. Sounds like a straight six. It yeah. sounds good. It sounded like it was running real rough. Yeah, that was rough as. It yeah. was like brrr. It didn't sound like smooth six cylinders. How's that? I've got to get more excited. I just realized this build that's been happening for like eight months, maybe. Built this, this is the first engine I've ever built on my own. She fired up, bit of uh, tuning issues, wiring issues, but we got there in the end. It doesn't sound amazing, but obviously this is where you start actually doing things with the tune, getting it to run right, the amount of fuel on that. So got to find a dyno tuner now, get it sorted, get it running. But I think we've pretty much got to go through and do the water system so I can actually drive it. Um, you don't want to keep running these things just idling because you can, kind of glaze the bores and that. So we need to run it under load, get all the cooling in so I can drive it, put it under load and bed the rings in. Um, but yeah, it made the right noises and that's a tick in my box. Sorry. Thanks boys. No worries mate. What's all that oil over here? Alan Woody, okay yeah, the power steering's not hooked up. See here? Ah. We got a bit of oil squirting out, boy. Whew. All right, I've got 8% battery left on the camera. Big thanks to the boys coming out and sorting that out. There was a couple of issues that I wouldn't have figured out on my own. Um, but yeah, obviously last episode, if you didn't see that, go back and watch it, where we actually did the full turbo install and everything. Um, the start of this one, we just got it running. But yeah, now I can go through, finish it off, get all the coolant and stuff in and um, enjoy the car. I'll bring it around boys when it's running. Come check out the Skid Factory. Yeah, definitely. Check, check out our channel. Yes, last week obviously, if you haven't checked out their channel, I think it's the last episode they dropped on Wednesday. I went forward driving with their 6PT Cummins Patrol that they just built. But I'm only half an hour away from the workshop, so I'm sure there'll be things in the future we do with these guys again. Can so, do one of those build reviews on the car or not? Oh, we can do. Maybe do that tomorrow. We'll Rig be filming. review, bro. Rig review. Rig, Rig rundown. rundown. That's Rig the rundown. One. There we go. How's my battery going? Good. Alrighty. We'll say bye to the boys and then I'm going to hook into finishing this stuff off. Sweet. See you, dude. Cheers, boys. Alright, so more bits have gone on. We've sorted out the air conditioning system, got some hoses on, and I tell you what, I'm glad I got a good quality aircon condenser from the Wreckers. Hmm, drove all the way to bloody Brisbane for that thing. Paid way too much for what it is, but anyway, it's in the car. He reckons it was in a running car, but she's a bit twisted and battered. Suits the front of the car, to be honest. Anyway, but radiator can go in now. Um, obviously, we've gone ad rate again. Just like I said, I've used these on my patrol, um, and it's been absolutely amazing, so I've gone for another Adrad radiator, oh, and it should just fit straight in. This is an 80 series one, they said. I have done a test fit, so voila. There we go. And the bonnet does clear. If I use the factory bonnet, that is. Alright, so a lot is going through my head at the moment because there's so many little bits and pieces, odds and ends that I'm figuring out as I go. I was about to kind of finish off the last couple of lines to the turbo for the coolant and then fill her up, but then I discovered I haven't even sorted out my fans yet. Now, I can either go a shroud or thermos. Now, I'm leaning towards the thermos again this time because of the reason that you can turn them off when you go through a water crossing. Those clutch fans, sometimes if they grab a fin in the water, they can punch straight through your radiator. So. What I need to do is get this thing out and get a shroud made. 
So I'm gonna do that before I fill it up with water because then it's a pain in the butt. You gotta flush all the coolant out, drain it and start again. So I think it's time to write a list. Is that much going on? I, uh, I don't have the dyno tune for another two weeks. So I do have time. I don't need to run it again. And after chatting to some guys, it might be better to bed the motor in on the dyno rather than trying to do it around here. So it takes the pressure off a bit to actually get the thing running. So, well, it started, but you know, drive it. So, best thing to do, of course, is write a list. Alrighty, so we've got a few things. The soundproofing, I've got to finish off. Intercooler piping, radiator shroud, turbo water lines, wire up the dry-by-wire throttle, install the center console, and more interior parts. Con condenser fan, it doesn't have a fan on the condenser at the moment, so I don't know if we'll put one on yet or not. Mount the power steering reservoir, and probably a million other things I haven't thought of yet. So, mount the power steering reservoir, that's something I can do. Let's get onto that. One thing at a time, that's the trick. Honestly, don't think I have ever seen the workshop this dirty. There is shit everywhere. That's what happens when you're mid-build, I guess. Anyway, what we're gonna be talking about today on this week's tech tip is wiring and how I do my different types of connections and joins, cable ends, battery connections, butt connectors, all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna go through a bit of a basics. We've got three or four different types of connections that we're gonna do. All right, so the first join that we're gonna do is a basic sort of butt connection. Now, this isn't when the end of a cable is, is if you've got to join two cables where it's not anywhere near a plug. Now, the best way that I recommend doing this is with a full soldered connection so that there's no just contact, there's a physical connection between the two wires. So, we'll grab a, I don't know, bit of this. We'll make a cut, obviously saying. So first, what you do is you wanna strip the wires. You can either use a set of wire strippers like these ones. You wanna do about 10 centimeter sort of cut. Not 10 centimeters, 10 millimeters or one centimeter, or you can use a sort of stripper like this one here. They both do the same job. Now, I wouldn't go and twist these ones around. Normally that's what you do, but you leave them kind of frayed. And you just want to join them together. But before you do that, the most important step, put a piece of heat shrink on. You slide that over, and then you just want to push the two ends together, and you'll see that they sort of fray, come apart like that. They kind of all blend into each other. And when it's joined, you want to sort of, it's a bit of a trick here, a bit of a method, Grab each side and kind of twist it together. So you pull the back side clockwise, front side clockwise, so they kind of blend together like that. Now that's basically half a join. Then you've got a soldering iron here. You can either hold the solder and have the cable resting, or here I'm letting the uh, solder rest and have the cable on top. And you just kind of feed it through. The heat will, will pull it through. You don't want to go too much. Just to see that little bit there, I dabbed it in so the two ends are joined. Blow it to cool it down. You can see there you've got a nice join. The worst thing you can do is put too much solder in, make a big mess. Then when it's cooled a little bit to the touch, you slide your bit of uh, heat shrink over. You can use just the normal lighter or a back bit of solder if you do it properly, very carefully. Just in induce a little bit of heat onto that heat shrink. And there you go. That is a solid join. Wires are connected electronically, physically. You're good to go. Next one I want to do is just a normal kind of crimp connection on the end of a wire. Now this is sort of your basic connection. Here we've got a male end, you can have a female end as well. Same sort of deal. Strip a piece off, you can go a little less, maybe six mil or just under half a centimeter. This time I do like to just spin the end up so it's nice and solid. Simply push it on. Now there's different colors. You got your red, your blue and your yellow. That's depending on the size of the wire you're joining. This one, the blue fits best. And here on the actual crimp connectors that I've got here, there's a red, blue, and yellow dot. So you do the corresponding one, the blue one here, make sure the wire's pressed all the way in. You simply press that down, crimp it all the way, let it go. Job done, that's so nice and tight. Right, so we've got a couple of different battery cable sizes here. I was gonna do both, but I might just do one because uh, 
time-wise. Now first you want to get the sheaf off. Now there probably are special crimpers or strippers you can use to get this off, but the cables are that bloody big, I just use a piece of uh, a bit of a Stanley knife. There we go, now the battery connection end, you just want to kind of match the amount of copper off the end to your actual lug. Give it a spin, push it on. Now what you want, this is a Toledo hydraulic compression um, crimper. Now on the actual lug it'll say what it is, 3510, put the trucks in, basically feed your cable through it and start pumping it up and you'll feel it grab. You want it nice in the central there. Bang, pretty much there, back it off and you'll blow yourself away because it's the most professional looking crimp you've ever done in your life. Battery cable done and you can obviously put a heat, bit of heat shrink around that as well. Anyway, that's a bit of an overview of the different connections and crimps that I like to use. They're all over this 80 series. So speaking of 80 series, let's get back to the episode. So, I'm waiting on a couple of bits from well, eBay of all places, but today we're heading around to Fat Pipes to get the exhaust done. So, she's going on the trailer. It's halfway up the trailer because I'm bloody puffed winching it on because the bits that I need are the bits I need to make it running. So, you're probably wondering, Sam, why aren't you making your own exhaust? And I am learning to TIG, but I am learning to TIG. Yeah, it's not amazing. Got some other stellar examples here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, TIG welding is one of those things I need patience for, which I don't have. And also I've got the wrong gas. That's why it's looking like arse and it's all gray, but I'll get to the TIGing soon. Maybe the boys can teach me down at Fat Pipes. We'll see how they go. Alrighty guys, so we've just wheeled the turd off the trailer. Well, I call it a turd, it's the van cruiser. I've got to forget that one. Now we're back down at Fat Pipes here in Kalanga. They actually did the turbo manifold um, that you saw in last episode. Now, they built that thing off the car. They didn't see the car, it was just built on the motor. And it's really actually quite difficult to build those turbo manifolds. So they've done an awesome job to make it fit without any interference, not seeing the car itself. So we're back here and we're gonna get them to do the exhaust too. Um, now the turbo manifold I have put on properly now. I went down to AP Powder Coating um, in Meadowbrook. Now they did a ceramic coating on it. I've just gone black. Um, they do some pretty cool colors and stuff, which stay tuned because I'm gonna go back to them to do all my um, intercooler piping, do something a little bit special, but we're just going on the black. It keeps those temperatures down in those hot sort of places where the turbo manifold sits. Um, so. Stay tuned, tomorrow I'm gonna get these guys and do a bit of filming around putting the exhaust together. Obviously, I'm no TIG expert, we saw that a little earlier. I still need to learn how to use that bloody machine. But they're gonna do the exhaust. Um, I'm gonna tinker around doing a few other things, fix up some wiring, maybe play a bit with that intercooler piping and get that thing sorted. Um, but once that's done, exhaust is on and it's one step closer to have this thing running. I'll tell you what, there's been stranger places that I've worked on my car. I see that we, everywhere I go when the, when the car's not in my shed, I can't help but work on it. Flashback to when I was in uh, Toowoomba getting the exhaust done on the patrol, just knocked up a bull bar. Why not? Anyway, I'm in the car park here. Um, I've put some heat shield on the turbo drain, so I've got some of that Raceworks heat shield, that stuff is the only thing I'd trust to handle the heat right near that exhaust manifold. Anyway, what we're doing now is looking at the intercooler piping and that. So I've got a bunch of bends and straights and bits and pieces. Now I got this from Ben Brothers in Morayfield, I think they are. Yeah, Morayfield. Now he's one of the only places that actually stocks a bunch of bends and bits and pieces. So normally you gotta wait a whole lot of time or order it online. So he shoots it out really quick. Um, so that's where I got all my stainless from. Now I've got a couple of straights, a couple of bends. I'm gonna try and knock up a bit of a, a system. I think on the turbo side, it's not too bad. Here's really easy. It's basically just a straight piece of three inch. And then I've got to sort out a little bend at the end to connect them to that throttle body. So let's get into um, raping this shop with their cutters and benders and grinders and welders. and see if we can put something together. Oh, 
Oh, stop what you're doing. Everything has to change as I balance my camera now. This is why sometimes I do like Instagram because I put a few posts up of me doing the stainless intake piping. Everyone's like, no, Sam, you can't use stainless for intake. You've got to use aluminum, which makes sense because all my intake temperature sensors, my blow off valve, all the flanges are aluminum and it's to do with heat. So if you use stainless steel, it holds a lot more heat. Aluminum keeps your intake temps a bit cooler. So let's do all of that again, but in aluminum. Might have to go see Jake and get some alley welding done. Thought I was being held good on the TIG there. The next day. Alrighty, so we got up this morning. Now, the boys have already got the car on the hoist. <laughs> I'm ready to work. I had to shoot out this morning, do a couple of things, drop a couple of cars off. So they've already got up on the hoist, ready to go. Cracking into it already. How's it going? I couldn't be bothered waiting for you any longer. I know. How's my form rocking up at 9.30? Get a full today. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at what the plan is. I bought my mask today so I can actually see what's going on with the TIG. Might learn a thing or two of these blokes. Well, we'll do three and a half inch off the turbo. Yeah. Because there's not enough room between the tail shaft and the, um, and the rail. So the standard 80 Cruiser, they actually go outside of the rail and they go between the edge of the car and the and the chassis rail at the side here. So we're trying to get it inside, but... Like a hundred series, a hundred series. Yeah. Here, but... Because we're doing three and a half, you can't do three and a half in the V-band. Yeah. Yes. So we'll put the V-band up here. Yep. And then just do three from there back. Yeah. Flexing in here. Right, oh, so two extra things that need to go on the dump pipe is the O2 sensor. So I've got that um, single wideband from the Haltech system. Um, and also with the red art gauges, I'm adding in an EGT probe, which I don't have in the patrol, but being a turbo car, your EGT is basically your exhaust gas temperature, and that's something you should keep an eye on just to see how the motor's running. Make sure those pistons aren't getting too hot. So just marked a couple of locations on the dump pipe where those probes are gonna go, rip it out. That's all stainless bungs as well. They just weld in, and um, that should be sorted for those things, and then you can pretty much make the rest of the system from there. Alrighty, so this is the uh, O2 sensor bung. Now, people are always gonna have a whinge. Bill, not bought, why aren't you doing it yourself? I'm gonna have a crack, I'm still learning to TIG. I'm not good enough to make a whole system myself, but this is a bit of a thicker piece of material so I can get away with a little bit more uh, goo in there. So, give it a crack, see what happens. Oh, not half bad. Maybe, oh. Now you will, I got my thing stuck. Fucking shaky. Put a mask on and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Here we go, getting a TIG lesson. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna make a mess of this. Fuck. Look at this, that's a mess. At least this bit's hitting. Oh, fuck. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. You started off well. Yeah, that's going good, mate. Yeah, but you went to like two and you have a look at it. If I had two hands, it'd be good. You have got two hands. Alrighty, whoa. My lens is always filthy. Bit of an update. So the first half of the system's in, it's real tight through here like we said. The offset means that there's not much clearance in the transfer case. So first half's in, we've got a bit of a bracket made up there. Now the second part, we're just gonna run through, hopefully dive over the top of the chassis and come out the back through here. Um, but the rear tank's not in, so I need to make sure the sub tank's not gonna foul. Um, so we're just gonna dump it out the side here for now and then I can sort of go out from there and see where it'll end up. Or just leave it, who knows, just dump it down. Oh, here it is. Freshly welded. So we did end up throwing a muffler in despite me going, let's go straight through, but apparently they're a bit noisy. It is a petrol, not a diesel, so we'll see how we go. I know. <laughs> I gotta get better on the TIG. I did a little bit, I did this bit here somewhere. I did a tiny bit of that. Just a bit of information, if you haven't seen these before, we're actually using V-bands for all the joints. Now, gone those days using flanges. I had flanges on my first system on the patrol, which is where you basically have three bolts and a gasket or something. And a few times I've seen them actually blow through, been down a power cruise and my uh, 
Buddy joins blown out in the exhaust with these V-bands. It's a perfect seal the whole way around. It's a machined ring in the middle and then you just clamp it up with a bolt. So a bit more of an expensive thing to do, but really nice way to join your exhaust. And when you put them on, you can seal them around, get the angle and direction exactly where you want it. All right, it's almost knockoff time, literally almost five o'clock. Last little bit of the system was done. I've decided to do a, a strange little tip. There was a motorbike exhaust sitting on the ground. I was like, do that to the tip. So I'm gonna get so much hate for it, but look at that. It's got a point on it. We'll just dump it out there for now. Like I said, I need to find out where this sub tank's gonna sit. Maybe move it, extend it, leave it, I don't know. But there's the full system. Looks absolutely awesome. All V-bands, stainless. Real tight fit, but we got it in there. Little hot dog muffler, worst case, I can change that out if it's too noisy or not noisy enough or whatever. But, um, top job. No worries. <laughs> so now I've got to push it on the trailer because I still can't drive it because of that bloody throttle and um, get the thing home, continue cracking on with it. I don't know if this will be the end of the episode or not, but there's plenty more to do on the car, that's for sure. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to click up here to subscribe to the channel. Click over here for our latest merchandise on our website. And down below or to the side, I'm not sure where it is, is, is our last episode. If you haven't watched it, click on that to check it out. See you guys.